All right, hello, Venice Silver Kyle, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Tyranny of Faith by Richard Swan, which is the second novel in the Empire of the Wolf series, which is going to be a trilogy. So we are not going to go into any major spoilers here. I'm going to keep this as generic as possible and only have very minor spoilers that I'll try to keep near the end. And I'll also mention if I'm going to be talking about a minor spoiler here, because I really want to keep this as vague as possible for those that haven't read this, along with the first novel, Justice of Kings. If you haven't read this, I'm not going to be explaining what happened really in the first one, other than the generics of it. Uh, just enough to get an understanding of what's happening in the sequel. So I, I will not be spoiling anything from the first book either. Not even who survives. I'm going to stay away from that. I'm going to stay away from names other than one main character who is the narrator for the, the, the two novels that we have here, which is Helena. So l before we get into talking about that, though, we just have to appreciate the artwork here. This looks incredible, and you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover. It happens with me quite often. Uh, obviously, if I hear some really good reviews of a book, the cover doesn't need to matter, but these look absolutely incredible, and that's kind of part of what got me interested in them in the first place. And the spines... This looks so nice on the shelf. They did a great job with these. And as you can kind of see, there is a bit of a difference in the sizes here. So the first book was about 400 pages on in hardcover and the sequel is a, a little over 500 pages. So we get a, an extra 100 pages worth of material. And I would say for the most part, it is definitely warranted. There, It does get a little bit longer in certain instances in the middle, which kind of happened actually in the first book as well. But I still very much enjoyed both of these books. So what happens here is that it takes place right after Justice of Kings. And the group that we have is now having to head back to the main city uh, where the emperor resides for this empire that he has. And this is going to be the first time that all of them are seeing, except for one character who has been here before. So they're all seeing this gigantic city for the first time with all the justices there. Now the justices... I don't even know if, that, if, the, if, the, if the plural version of justice is just justice or justices, but justices or a justice is a person that is that goes throughout the empire and kind of upholds the law. So they're kind of the the judge, jury, and pro, and, and, and executioner all in one, and they uphold the emperor's law. So they go into every town, every city, uh, kind of you know sticking to a specific map and. They say, hey, are you upholding the law over here? Are you sticking with the specific empire's religion? If you're not, then there's penalties to pay. And they have specific magic that they're entitled to as a justice. And they're the only ones that have this specific power. And what happens is that in the first novel, you're really just delving into a mystery and a few other things happen and while they're just investigating this one mystery that kind of takes place, because that's something that they also do. They become investigators if they go to a, a town and something happens, they want to look into it. But now it's a much on a much bigger scale because of the events that happen in the first book. And it, it's OK. So now there's something that's going on. There's a force out there that's against the Empire and against justices, uh, the justice characters as well. So the empire or the emperor, excuse me, is losing power. So he wants to get the justices back in the city so that he can use them because that's his biggest power is the justice because they have magic and they're generally seen as people that uh, as, as, uh, by far, they're, they're essentially seen as the law and everybody respects them and their powers. Like you could have, they, they walk up to an army at one point that's kind of walking around and everybody there, there's like hundreds of them, if not thousands, I can't remember the ex exact number. And they still don't want to really go up against the justice. They're, they're, there's, they're kind of at odds at uh, this one aspect in the first novel. And I really enjoyed that, uh, to see that, you know, just one person is enough to kind of scare like a small army essentially. So the emperor wants them back. So this group has to go to the, uh, to, to, to the main city. And while they're there, another mystery unravels and they, they want them 
the emperor specifically deems everybody to focus on this. He doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't care about this other force that's kind of gaining power on the outside that's against the empire. He does not care about that. Uh, and also a, a, a member of, of the group has become ill and they want to, the group just wants to deal with that. They don't even care. They, they care about to a degree, the other force that's out there. They don't really want to deal with this mystery. They, they, they're kind of torn because there's just so many other things that they would rather focus on, but it's been deemed that they need to focus on this mystery. And that, in that, it kind of felt like the first one where the mystery, because of everything else that's unraveling, you kind of just want to focus on one thing. And while you can intertwine things so that they kind of make a bit more sense, I still think that I would have appreciated it more, potentially, if we if we had a mystery, then you have these other things to deal with. But I get that that's where you can kind of have some tension that that's the characters don't want. They have too much on their plate and it creates some drama and, and all that kind of stuff. So I do, I do get that at the same time, because there are moments because that they're dealing with all of this. that you, We do get some very nice dialogue, some uh, character development because of all the stress that they're under with what's going on. And it did work in, in some regard in, in that aspect. It just felt that the middle was kind of a little bit long with this mystery. And I wasn't as involved in, as involved with it as I was um, everything else that was kind of going on. So that's just something that I noticed while I was reading this. I will say, though, that the main character, Helena, who is kind of like the Justice's sidekick or, or apprentice, apprentice. In the first novel, I felt that because of her background... While she was like just like an 18, 19, 19, 20 year old, I can't remember exactly how old she was, but she's fairly young. Because of her background, I expected her to be very, like, she should be seasoned. She should have seen the things that she's seen as she grew up were very harsh. And so I expected her to be very strong in the first novel. And she felt very, like, she was naive and just, you know, still very innocent. And that worked. That ended up working out really well because in the sequel, I feel like she's progressed so much more. She has much more of a, of a voice to herself. She doesn't seem nearly as childish as she did in the first novel. So I really liked that progression. And we got a lot more of the, of her, more so her character dealing with the other side characters that allowed her to have a bigger voice. And we got a little bit more from the other side characters. I still wish I would have had more because I generally do like a big group of characters and not just focusing on one. But because of the progression that we got with Helena, I was very happy with that. So I, I don't want to get into any major spoilers, but I will say that having said it, everything that happens in the middle with everything else that's going on, the last act of this novel, I have to give to Richard Swan because he did it in both. The last act is by far why I'm so interested and love this series because he knows exactly how to end a book with the last act. It's not like the, just the last 10 pages or whatever. You're looking at a good 100 pages of just awesome action and high intense scenes. It feels like, you know, the two towers, the ending of that. And it's just like an all out action scene. That is awesome. I it's, it's not just all action, but there's a lot, cause there's a lot of other things that are kind of going on, but I absolutely loved the last hundred pages of this. The same thing with justice of the Kings. Uh, I will say that like the other, the other hundred pages that were the hundreds of pages that we're reading are still very interesting because we're, there's a lot of other things going on. It's just that he really knows how to end a book. And I can't say that for a lot of not just books, not just fantasy books, not just books in general, just any kind of story medium. It's hard to nail that landing. And both times now, he's surpassed my expectations. So I'm very happy with that. So I very much enjoy this. I'm very much looking forward to the third uh, in this series. It does slow down a little bit in the middle. And I wanted a little bit more from the other characters because I think that could have been a little bit more interesting. I also am not the biggest fan of a first person narrative due to reasons that I can't really get into um, without, without spoiling it. Um, but I'll give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars, which is the same rating that I gave Justice of Kings. It'll be a 4 stars on Goodreads. And I will say that I probably enjoyed Justice of Kings a little bit more 
which is odd because it's a smaller scope, but I really like the smaller scope story sometimes where you're dealing with just an investigation. That's all that's going on. And then there's a little bit more that happens near the end. Whereas this one, it kind of feels like we're going into like a massive thing. And by the looks of it, the third book is going to be really big, but I'm, 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 I'm very much looking forward to that as well. I, I have to say that because of where everything is kind of leading, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I just, I still enjoyed the, 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 the little, the beginnings. I generally really like beginnings. There's something about them. When you set up the world, you set up the characters, you set up the lore. There's something magical about that for me. So 3.5, technically four stars on Goodreads. Very much enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see the third book that looks like it's going to be coming out next year. So let me know in the comments below what you think about this, and we'll talk to you all next time. Thank you for watching. You've been bearded in. I'm messing up my words there. Beardage! <laughs>